Last night, San Diego native Aaron Harang protected the home turf. Eight innings, three hits, a 3 0 shutout over the Dodgers. Today's starter, rookie left-hander Corey Loki with the best ERA of Padre starters. He looks to wrap up a San Diego series win. Over two million have seen the Padres this year. Never know who you'll meet at Petco. And welcome Sunday baseball at Petco Park downtown San Diego as the Padres host the Los Angeles Dodgers final game of this three game series. And a happy Sunday to you all with Mark Grant and Tony Gwynn Dick Enberg. Nice to have you along. The Padres uh, will try to beat the toughest guy in the league to defeat and that's uh, Clayton Kershaw who is going for the pitching triple crown. He needs a win today to match Ian Kennedy who won last night 21. We'll get more into that later and they'll counter the Padres with their own left hander. He's 26 but a rookie and he's had a terrific season Tony. He, he really has and as a rookie he started out this year in the bullpen and then they put him in the rotation and he gradually started to feel his way of how to be a good starting pitcher and the progression that he's made to me has been tremendous. Fastball command much better, breaking ball command much better, just his overall presence on the mound. I, I think the Padres really have found themselves a good one, Corey Luke. And Corey Luke is going to get some votes for National League Rookie Pitcher of the Year. There's no doubt about that. But remember, Corey Luke made the team because Joe Thatcher was hurt. They needed a lefty in the bullpen. And you talk about a guy who just took a great opportunity and made it into a great left handed pitcher for the San Diego Padres. Why? Each time as a reliever and as a starter, more strikeouts than innings pitched. We've got ourselves a 26-year-old who is a power pitcher, and I think he's going to get better as time goes on with more experience at the big league level. You know, every team has injuries, and you ask the younger players to step up. Then Clayton Richard is hurt, and Dustin Mosley. So Lupke, it starts in the bullpen because of Thatcher. Then he gets to start because of the other injuries, and he certainly has delivered. It's going to be a fascinating game today. Two left-handers, two outstanding pitchers on the mound as we look at our starting pitching match. Matchup. Kershaw 20 and 5, ERA best in the National League. His uh, batting average against best in the National League. He leads the National League in strikeouts. Can the Padres beat him? Corey Lupke will try to shut down the Los Angeles Dodgers. They have their A starting lineup going against the Padres today. And the pitching matchup is brought to you by Discount Tire, where America saves on tires. The Ohio State Buckeye, Corey Lupke. He'll take the challenge. He goes against Kershaw on this Sunday.
Free Sunday. And players, as per usual, uh, a member of the service at each position, and each Padre comes out to shake their hands and offer their thanks for their terrific service. Well, on the mound, Corey Lupke, our starting pitcher profile, brought to you by your San Diego County Cadillac dealer. Stop in today for an attractive lease or purchase offer. Lupke, as you look at that batting average against 209, he has not pitched enough innings to qualify for the league numbers. But if he did, he'd be one point behind the leader. And that's Clayton Kershaw. 208 is the best batting average against in the National League. And Mookie at 209. That tells you what you need to know about his stuff. Overpowering stuff. And we've talked about it before. More strikeouts than innings pitched. And I've always had a motto. Last one, best one. Let's see something special here today for Corey Lupke and the San Diego Padres against this Dodger lineup. It's going to be a tough lineup. Uh, no rookies in there today except for the man leading off, B. Gordon, who's a 298 hitter. Well, we got Jerry Sands down in the seventh spot, 12 game hitting streak. But uh, basically, Don Mattingly has put out his uh, middle of the year starting lineup. And the first pitch of the game is in for a strike. Gordon with 11 game hitting streak. Matt Kemp has hit safely in eight straight, and Jerry Sands 12 in a row. The reason why this LA team has started to play its best baseball of the year is offensively. They started to get some guys going, and with Kemp in the middle of their lineup, they, they played well here. Woo, up and in with a fastball at 93. Mattingly going with his uh, top lineup for a couple of reasons. He wants Kershaw, of course, to pick up another win and tie Ian Kennedy for most wins in the league. Fouled out of play. And the other is it's meaningful to a first year manager to. Complete the season with a winning record. Yep. The Dodgers are 79 and 78. He wants to finish on that winning side. Especially after the first half was yeah. rather dismal. He reaches out and hits a little pop fly. And the shortstop Bartlett gathers it in for the first out of the game. Let's check the lineup for the Dodgers. Brought to you by the Pies Patrol. Presented by Jerome's Furniture. Text winning. To 269 411 to enter. Jamie Carroll steps up now. It's always hit well against the Padres. Nearly 300. Then Matt Kemp going for a potential uh, triple crown season. Juan Rivera bats cleanup. Then Miles Loney, the only left handed bat in the lineup. Then Sands, Barajas, and Kershaw. Carroll checking in at 285. Jokes up on the handle of the bat. Good eye. Walks a lot. The piss. That's <laughs> what you call a guy like Carroll. He just does, you know, not super in any category, but, boy, he's a battler. Gives you quality at bats, can play, you know, really yeah. infield positions. That was Brett Butler to me, and I've mentioned yeah. that before. He was yeah. a little pissed. Yeah. From the left side of the plate. The ball two strikes to Carroll. They play him very shallow. Maven way in in right center field. Two balls, two strikes. Dodgers winning six of their last eight, and they're 22 and nine in their last 31 games. That one fouled away. And uh, to their credit, in their last nine series, they've won eight of them. So the Padres trying to slow that train and win the series with this rubber game today. Outside, that's what Carroll will do. You got to throw him strikes. I think Corey worked underneath that change up there. The arm angle kind of dropped a little bit, led with his elbow just a tad, and slowed up that arm action. And ball four. Now Carroll's aboard for Matt Kemp. Here comes a man hitting 325. That's now six points behind Ryan Braun. Tied for the home run lead, 37, and leads in RBIs with 119. Here's the defense that will try to stop a base knot. Gonzalez, Bartlett, Hudson, and Guzman. Around the horn, Cunningham and left, Maven in center, Denorfi in right, and Hundley behind the plate. Some of the Dodger fans uh, chanting MVP. 
MVP swing, but fastball by him. In his eight game hitting streak, all he's done is bat 515 with four homers and nine runs batted in. So he has finished in a strong manner. Tied him up with that inside heater. Luke, he's not afraid. Going, going right after Going him. right at it. Looks like that ball has a little run on it, too. A little cut action to it at 93. It's that late life that everyone uh, admires about Luke Key. Another fastball. He's coming inside, that's for sure. Up and in. And a drive to center field for a base hit. Carroll on his way to third. Ball is kicked around in the outfield. Carroll's being waved in. And the Dodgers take the lead 1 0. Well, Maven and Cunningham had trouble coming up with it cleanly as that ball hit so hard by Camp. It had a lot of roll. And he winds up at second base, and the Dodgers have a run. Yeah, fastball up and out over the plate. Kemp gets on top of it and hits it so hard. He may have been trying to cut this thing off. He's just trying to slide and cut it off. Ends up kicking it, and luckily, it hits Cunningham in the chest. Otherwise, that ball's ricocheting towards left field, and Kemp, you know, with his speed, might have a chance to go all the way around the bases. Big so, time 0-2 mistake. So no error. 120 RBIs now for Kemp at second base. Rivera hits that ball well to right field. That chases Denorfia back to the warning path. Two away, and Kemp tags and advances to third. Brings up Aaron Miles, switch hitting infielder. Third base today. Overall 279, but uh, better from the right side, 295. So the walk to Carroll and it pays off for the Dodgers as Kemp is able to chase him home with that double to left center. You know one run in support of Kershaw isn't just a little single run. Yeah, it's a well, big run. This is a, a huge at bat right here. You'd like to get miles out and limit the damage to just one run. Two and oh. James Loney, the only left-handed batter in the lineup other than uh, D. Gordon. He's on deck. Left-handed hitters are batting only 160 against Lutke this year. Up and in, and it's 3-0. and Overthrew that one. Mm -hmm. now looking back at that pitch to Kemp, the 0-2 mistake, it was up. Nick Conley was set up inside and I think sometimes pitchers might think I've got to make too good of a pitch just didn't get it up and in enough. Looked like a comfortable swing also from Kemp. Yeah. High strike three and one. Let's go back to that 0 2 pitch to Kemp. See how Nick wanted up and in. It's up all right. Try to tie him up inside and get it out of mm -hmm. the plate. Three and two now is miles with a good cut. Dodgers will leave San Diego tonight. They finish their season in Arizona. Fouled out of play. And the Cubs come in for the final three here at Petco against the Padres. Cubs trying to spoil the Cardinals bid to get that wild card. It's really a scramble yeah. as the teams are all losing that are in the wild card hunt. Three and two. Line drive, base hit. Another run for the Dodgers. They lead it 2 0 as Miles delivers his 44th RBI of the year. Well, Tony, you know, as a hitter, full count, see a lot of pitches. Advantage probably goes towards the hitter. He's seen a lot of Corey Lukey. Out in front of it just a little bit. Well, he was ahead in the count. And 3 2 there. You figure he's going to get something good to hit. Got a fastball in, lined in left field. Well, Los Angeles has already staked Kershaw to a couple of runs without the left hander taking the mound. One out walk to Carroll started it. Kemp's 
RBI double to left center and a two out single by Miles for a two nothing advantage. L.A. Kemp leads the league in runs. He's got another one. 111 for him. Loney with a terrific second half of the season to raise his average to that 288 mark. Breaking ball. Slider. And we were talking earlier in this series about how he was, you know, Loney was down in the 230s for a long time and he's just gotten hot. And like you said, might trying to finish the season strong. Got mm -hmm. his average up to 288. Another slider and it misses two and one. We'll review the uh, wild card situation as we progress today in the game and we'll update the scores. That's a strike. One final is in, and the Boston Red Sox have lost again to the Yankees six to two. Uh, the Red Sox are. In the mis miserable throws at the moment, they've lost uh, 18 of their last uh, 23 games. That's a doubleheader today, right? Yeah, they got another one to play tonight against the Yankees in New York. So at the moment, Tampa Bay is only one game behind Boston for the wild card, and the Angels are only two behind Boston. Two balls, two strikes. That's in there. Strike three. But the damage has been done. Two runs on two hits. A man left. Coming up in the bottom of the first inning, Maven, Bartlett, and Hundley. 2 nothing L.A. against Clayton Kershaw and here's his profile brought to you by Bank of America setting opportunity in motion in San Diego to help our community and our economy. 20 and 5 Ian Kennedy won his 21st last night for Arizona the ERA 227 best in the major leagues. He leads the National League in strikeouts with 242 and there's 208 batting average against his best in the National League. Cy Young credentials for 23 year old lefty from Highland Park Texas. How about the strikeouts and walks. Are you kidding me. <laughs> <laughs> it's unbelievable. Cameron Maben leads it off for the Padres. Hits it sharply but right to the shortstop Gordon he throws across in time. Lots of Dodger folks here today at Petco. 
Here's Bud Black's Padre lineup presented by Ashford University's Homers for Heroes. If any Padre today hits a home run, Ashford will donate $2,500 to Operation Homefront. Maven Bartlett Hundley Guzman after missing a week with that sore neck is at the cleanup spot. Denorfia Hudson hit sixth, Cunningham seventh, Gonzalez at third base eighth, and Lukey ninth. Bartlett with 136 hits leads the Padres. His average at 251. Well, that check swing foul just whizzed by Nick Hundley in the on deck circle. Oh, who's trying to convince who to become what type of fan? We got a Padre fan and a Dodger fan. Not talking. He can be convinced though. <laughs> <laughs> Swung out and missed and Kershaw has his first strikeout. Well he has dominated the Padres this year as he has everyone else. He's 2 and 0 with a 1 5 0 ERA. He's not had his usual strikeout total. The Padres have been tough in that regard. Let's we'll see what happens today. On that strikeout he threw the slider to go along with that fastball mid 90s a curveball and a change. Nick Hundley at 288. I think that slider is really because you know, Clayton Kershaw he threw a curveball earlier. Yeah. And he threw a lot of them. I think that slider. Slice down the right field side and that's going to curl foul the first row down in the corner. That slider has really put him over the hump. He's still mixing in that breaking ball and mixing in a changeup like he did with Bartlett on the second pitch. He'll still mix those in. But I agree the slider has been the pitch. He catapulted him into the upper echelon here in the National League. Fastball at 94. <laughs> 95. He's got that pop working, doesn't he? Barajas has got the good glove working. 95 mile an hour fastball. Sounds like an M80 going off. <laughs> it's just tough to deal with the variety of stuff you're going to see. Mm -hmm. Guy like Kershaw, 95 on a fastball, good slider, good overhand curveball, and a change. Comes back with another fastball at 95. Count goes two and two to Hundley. For me, usually the thing that gets these guys to the upper. Echelon. Early on when he came up, he had trouble throwing strikes, but now he's centered into the strike zone. And, and he strikes out Hundley, gets two strikeouts, Bartlett and Hundley, and uh, put out at first base. One, two, three, Kershaw, an impressive start, leaning on a 2 nothing lead.
renewed. We hope you've done the same. And that allows you to enter one of the 15 prizes in 15 games contest. And the winner today is Fritz and Janine Healy. They've won a dinner and a few innings of baseball with Vice President and General Manager Jed Hoyer. It's not too late to place your 2012 deposit. Enter to win. Call the Padres at 619-795-5555. The Healy's have been season ticket holders for the last nine years. Ground ball up the middle, a base hit. Jerry Sands extends his hitting streak to 13 games. Yeah, Lukey uh, not fooling the Dodgers in the first couple innings. He needs to settle in a little bit. A lot of pitches in that first inning. And the one mistake, you know, if he gets away with that 0-2 pitch to Kemp, who knows what happens after that, but that was a huge 0-2 mistake. Barajas batting 231, but uh, a heavy 231, 15 home runs. Nice movement on that fastball. Dodgers have secured third place in the West this year. Behind Arizona and San Francisco. Then it's Colorado two games ahead of the Padres. Two strikes on Barajas with Kershaw on deck. Well, in this modern era, a 20 game winner is something very special. You just don't see many of those. In fact, uh, in Padre history, only two men have won 20 games or more. Struck him out. That's the second strikeout. One away as Barajas goes down swinging. That's a good pitch by Corey Luke there, not giving in and wanting to throw the fastball. He threw him a breaking ball down and in. Barajas goes right over the top of it. That's the same type of pitch Kershaw threw to Jason Bartlett in the first inning for the Padres. In the bottom half of the first, that sharp slider down by that back foot. Very effective pitch. Kershaw up there perhaps to sacrifice and is. Bunts it hard to Lukey, goes to second base, and it's just in time. Bartlett covering, 1 6 on the put out. Look at here right away. Nick Hundley yelling 2 2 2. And I mean, this is a close play, mm -hmm. but they do get Sands at second. Watch Sands' front foot. It's, it's kind of high, yeah, isn't it? Comes up in the air. And Very close. Just got him. So two gone to the leadoff man, D. Gordon. Popped softly to shortstop his first time and takes a strike. Well, we talked to. About the only Padres to win 20 games in a season. Randy Jones did it twice, and Gaylord Perry, 21 wins in 1978. So just in the 70s, you go back to find the only two Padre pitchers that won 20. And uh, on this date, Randy Jones was the first Padre to win 20 games. He beat the Dodgers six to five. I mean, just think how how tough it is just to win a game. Fouled at 0 and 2, and then Jones the next year set the Padre record with 22 wins, most ever by a San Diego pitcher, the crafty left-hander. It didn't take long for him to win 20 either. It was <laughs> the games were less than two hours. Hey, hit this sinker, get out of here. Up high. And think about it, because you, let's say you go seven innings. It's out of your control after that, right? The bullpen can give it up. It's so, it's amazing to me when you hear guys winning 300 games. 350 games. He had 25 complete games yeah, in 76. Yeah, ridiculous, yeah. Swung on and missed strike three. Gordon is gone, and the Dodgers are out in the second. No runs ahead, and a man left. Padres come up in the home half of the second. Guzman, Denorfia, and Hudson.
Ryan Dempster of the Cubs, and we hope you'll join us. Music night presented by Loop, the first 30,000 fans in attendance. You'll receive a free download card featuring today's hottest songs, plus an opportunity to win a free Android smartphone. Visit Padres.com today for your tickets. Padres and Cubs wrap up the 2011 season, a 535 game on Wednesday. Kershaw facing the middle of the Padre order. Guzman, Denorfia, and Hudson here in the second. Guzman back in action and takes a strike. His average at 313, the only 300 hitter for the Padres. There's a curveball. That's nasty. Slider at 88 and comes back with a slow curveball at 73. And of course, you know he's got the fastball at 95, 96. Bounces that one. And that curveball, did you see how his arm came through the throwing air just bam, like yeah. very quickly with the illusion of like it's going to be a hard slider or a fastball, but then it's that Ephus curveball. Everything's the same. His delivery's the same. As a pitcher, that's what you have to do. And the best one's deception to go along with the location. How can he not be the Cy Young Award winner? He's got my vote. And I, I, I looked at the numbers this afternoon. I, Blazing the, fastball. The argument's going to be, you know, the team finished in third place. But his personal numbers. Uh, yeah, I mean, you know, Cy Young more than MVP. A lot of it is more of it's based on numbers. Wing and a miss. That's three consecutive strikeouts now of the four minis faced. Our comparison today is brought to you by the San Diego Toyota dealers. We've got what it takes. Toyota. Well, here are the candidates: Kershaw and Kennedy, the two twenty. Game winners, best ERA, best opposing batting average, most strikeouts not on that list. And Halliday and Lee will get some votes, but they'll split some of the Eastern votes. You know what I look at? See the wins and losses? Throw those out the window, as far as I'm concerned. I look at batting average against ERA. And the perfect example is Felix Fernandez last year. You give me a guy who's got an ERA of 2.27, I don't care if he's 8 and 18. And they're, and, and, and they're hitting 208 off him, he's getting my vote for Cy Young Award. Chop back to the mound. Kershaw able to field it and throw out to Northia. Because how many guys out there win 20 games and have an ERA about four and a half, 4.7? Because they've got a good offensive team. Well, yeah. All the numbers say Kershaw should win it. Yeah. Record wise, his ERA, his opponent's batting average, strikeouts, is leading the league in strikeouts. The numbers say he should win it. And there's no doubt about the winner in the American League. I don't. I know no, none Berlander, whatsoever, yeah. whatsoever. But again, on the Cy Young side, numbers generally are the factor that determines whether or not who wins the Cy Young MVP. A lot, di a little different. Because I, you know, let's be honest here. Matt Kemp's numbers are pretty good on the MVP side. Yes, they are. are there going to be two guys from a third place team to win MVP yeah, in the Cy Young? Yeah, that's uh, watch out. Here it comes back toward us. Hudson. I, that's going to be hard. Who then is the National League MVP? Oh. Fielder, Braun, and Milwaukee. They're going to split some votes. Yeah, I, I think I it's like Braun. Braun and, and Kemp are the two guys mm -hmm. to me. Definitely Matt Kemp, too. Yeah, it's going to be close. Ripped up to third, a backhand stab by Miles to throw across in time. What a play by Miles. And Kershaw raises the fist and says, Atta boy. One, two, three go the Padres, and Hudson robbed of the double.
The Cubs, the opposition, get your scratcher at any one of the Padres' remaining games. And we hope that uh, you'll win one of those jerseys right off the back of the Padres' players, manager, and coaches. All proceeds will benefit the Padres Foundation. Visit Padres.com today for your tickets. Carroll, who walked in the first inning, came around on Matt Kemp's double. And the count goes one and two on the Dodger second baseman with Kemp and Rivera to follow. Aaron Miles, an RBI single today, and uh, terrific defensive play to take a hit away from Hudson to close out the second inning. Ground ball just foul, almost clipped the corner of the bag. Yeah, we understand Ryan Braun is continuing. He had a couple of hits yesterday and he's got a couple more today. So it looks like he's got his eyes on the National League batting title. One and two. Line drive right at Bartlett. And one away. Well, the other reason why a guy like Ryan Braun is still playing in games is is that they're fighting hard to see who has the second best record in the National League. That'll give them the home series. And the Brewers are one game ahead of the Arizona Diamondbacks. And, you know, let's face it, nobody wants to play Philly in the first round and face that starting staff. So, Ron and Fielder are probably going to play right down to the very end. Kemp with his double in the first inning, his average at 326. And takes ball one. Now the batting race for the senior circuit. Braun now two for three today, 333. Reyes of the Mets and then Kemp at 326. Right. Back to back changeups. A lot of credit to when you hear the Dodgers uh, talk about Kemp this year goes to Davy Lopes. They really bonded and that Lopes has inspired him to have this kind of year. He certainly played below his potential last season. Yeah. Talking to Davy early in the year, he just told Matt he needed to be a much better player if this team was going to contend. Two and one and a high fly ball. He just missed that one. Maven cruising back. And on the warning pad. <laughs> that was skyscraper high and just kept going a 390 foot out for Kemp. I'll tell you what, you take that swing and hit the ball that high. And look at me, that ball just is carrying, carrying, carrying to the big, big part of the ballpark, too. When he catches this ball just a step short of the warning track and right in. Juan Rivera fly to right his first time. Strike with a fastball. Well, the Cubs in tomorrow night, 6:30 for our Honda Dealers pregame show. Monday night, Tuesday night, and Wednesday night to finish the season. Weak swing and a miss. Good slider. Mm -hmm. Tomorrow night it'll be Matt Latos seeking his ninth win against Casey Coleman. Tuesday night, Anthony Bass goes against Matt Garza. And LeBlanc and Dempster on Wednesday. Off the fist, a soft roller to second, and Hudson flips it to Guzman for the out, and it's a one, two, three inning. Dodgers go in order, bottom of the third, bottom of the order for San Diego, Cunningham, Gonzalez, and Lukey against Kershaw.
them today for an attractive lease or purchase offer. With Tony Gwynn and Mark Grant at Kenberg here at Pepco Park, bottom of the third, Aaron Cunningham leads it off. 2 nothing Dodgers behind Clayton Kershaw. High fly ball lifted to right field. Sands cruising toward the line. One away. That's seven in a row retired by Kershaw. Three of them strikeouts. Alberto Gonzalez brings a 214 average to the plate here on this Sunday. You know, Tony and Dick, I was looking at the Dodger media guy, Clayton Kershaw, time of service. Two years, 105 days going into this year, right? Tony, you know where I'm going with this, mm -hmm. right? He's going to Arby's in the offseason, ain't he? <laughs> yeah. Will yes. Hammond Cheddar, maybe? There's going to be a few guys on that team. <laughs> Arbitration. Oof. That's another wicked curveball. It just freezes that right handed batter. 0 2 the count to Gonzalez. Fastball. Uh, Waste that outside. And it's probably a case that's probably not even going to go to a hearing, right? They'll come to something, right? I don't know. With their financial situation, it's, it's going to be interesting. They got three guys that I'm sure every team in baseball would like to have. Mm -hmm. Fouled Kers at the plate. Kershaw, Ethier, and Kemp, all three of them are arbitration eligible. Mm -hmm. Kemp and Ethier are going to be free agents at the end of next season. And, of course, this is Kershaw's first chance at arbitration and you would think those are the three guys you would like to lock up if you're the Dodgers. One and two to Gonzalez. Lifts a foul ball. That'll find the fan behind the Padre dugout. You know we uh, have been remiss and we should have said something long before today but Aaron Harang we haven't talked about how about comeback player of the year for Aaron Harang, that's 14 a, and 7. It's a great argument, absolutely. Oh. I mean, that's, uh, we should have been campaigning for Harang. Foul back toward us. That just lands below. Great effort last night. Talk about finishing with a flourish. Eight innings of shutout ball, only three hits. 14 and 7 record. Her ball slipped out of his hand. You know, the arm strength of Aaron Harang is the one question mark that I had this offseason when the Padres acquired him. I'll tell you what, he has shown that that arm strength is back. Yeah. Quality pitches, quality numbers, good guy to have on the team. And he's happy to be back home. Yeah. Yeah. He mentioned that in the uh, post uh, game conference. Whoa, watch out! The bat goes flying behind the Dodger dugout as Gonzalez strikes out. And uh, that's a souvenir you don't necessarily want to accept. Hopefully everyone was able to part away. Slider down and in and mm. you can see trying to reach for it and bat goes flying. Mm. Woo. And the uh, fans are applauding uh, down behind that Dr. Dugout which indicates that whoever might have been nicked by that flying piece of lumber was not injured. Lukey, the hitter, had a couple of base knocks up in Colorado in his last outing. A win. Fouls that one. Good swing. Remember, both of his hits were to the opposite field. Kershaw likes to bury the fastball in, slider in to the right handed hitters. He might do the same here to Lukey. Mm -hmm. Teases him with that curveball. You know, on TV, it, it's kind of deceiving, but it's down by the batting cage yesterday, and Clayton Kershaw came out. The Dodgers stretched. He's a big boy, 6'3. Yeah. 217. Yeah. He, he is big. He, on TV, he doesn't look like yeah. he's that big a guy. But. Bounces that one. And it's 2 and 2 to Lupke. Apparently the bat struck a young fan. Looks like about a 12, 13-year-old fan, and he's being 
We want to be sure he's all right. Just guiding him up the uh, stairway. Oh my! Good looking fastball there, and it's three and two to Lukey. Padres without a base runner. First three two count. And Lukey walks. So much for perfection from the 23 year old ace. Check that one off. You got a base runner. Quite frankly, I hope he's backing up third against Maven after he throws one into the gap. <laughs> Padres have hit some balls right on the butt. They have. The Gordon first made inning. a nice play in the first inning on a ball hit by Maven, and then the, the play that uh, Miles made on Hudson in the second was a bullet down the line. He dove and threw him out at first. Bouncer, and it's ball one. They've been 0 for the last 11, but he's hit some balls on the nose. Right at a glove. And Kershaw having to work from the stretch for the first time. That slider for a strike. One and one. Goes from the first base side of the rubber, the stretch. Get a pretty good angle on that slider and that fastball down and into the righties. Kind of like a crossfire almost. One and two. Another slider. I know I've mentioned this before, but it, it, it just amazes me every time. Going into this game, 242 strikeouts. Nolan Ryan had 383 one year. One more than Sandy Kofa. Yeah. Unbelievable. Chris, he uh, completed something like 27 games that yeah. year. Uh, breaking ball down in the dirt. Mm -hmm. Nine innings didn't slow down Nolan. Yeah. If it went 11 12, he's still out there. Yeah. He pitched his fifth no hitter on this state, in fact, against the Dodgers. As a member of the Houston Astros, threw that one in the Astrodome. His fifth of seven no hitters. Seven. And, and how many one hitters? I mean, 12 we got one hitters. 12 one hitters. I saw one. <laughs> In the ninth inning, I mean, it's just shameful one hitter. Two and two to Maven. Struck him out. That's five strikeouts for Kershaw through three. We'll go back to the Nolan Ryan no hitter. Through three innings, Kershaw has not allowed a base hit. Two nothing, Dodgers. Question brought to you by AT&T Wireless. Today's question, 
Well, in both, we're talking about the pitching triple crown, and Clayton Kershaw is on the verge of winning that. Most wins, best ERA, most strikeouts. Who was the last pitcher to win the triple crown of pitching? You ought to be able to get that one. We'll have the answer bottom half of the inning. For the Dodgers here in the top of the fourth, leading 2 0, Aaron Miles, then Loney and Sands. Miles with a sharp single to left field his first time to drive in the second Dodger run. The first came home on Matt Kemp's double. Breaking ball, curveball hangs high. We talked about a shameful one hitter for Ryan. Not that there was any shame in the way he pitched it, but how it was spoiled. As I recall, it was at Anaheim Stadium. There was one or two outs in the ninth inning. And I want to say if Rudy Maoli was the second baseman, Dave Chalk the shortstop. And a pop fly. Guy was jammed. Can't remember the team. Jammed, so the pop fly wasn't very high. Second baseman looked at the shortstop. Shortstop looked at the second baseman. The ball landed right almost on second base for a hit. Oh, wow. <laughs> I mean, how tough is that? Miles goes down swinging. And that is the third strikeout for Lupke. Fourth strikeout. That's just good location yeah. of the power fastball down and away. I'm in the zone. Loney struck out, took a third strike his first time. Going back to his 12 one hitters of Nolan Ryan. I know we were one team that he pitched the one hitter against. Did you get the hit? I did not get the hit. I believe it was Terry Kennedy got the base hit. And it was a kind of that variety. It wasn't the line, it wasn't the line drive, but uh, he got it in there. Well, not many balls put in play when Ryan was right. He struck out so many. Yeah. Talk about three power, three extremely good pitches. Fastball, curveball, changeup. You know that with all that speed and arm power, leg power, he said that's where he got you know all of his power through his his legs. He was a uh, in his uh, company in the uh, Army Reserve was the wrestling leg wrestling champion. Loney drives that one into the right field corner and it's off the Petco sign. And Loney on his way to second, the throw by Denorthia comes up short, and Loney with a one out double. The year that uh, Ryan passed Koufax, and it was the last outing for him, his last, uh, what, I don't think it was the last game of the season, but it was going to be his last start. And he knew how many, I, I think he had to get 12 strikeouts, 13 mm -hmm. strikeouts. And he went into extra innings. Oh. And the final man that he struck out, man. I think the 11th or 12th inning, was the one that passed Koufax for 283. Wow. <laughs> Jerry Sands singled. First time, and he hits this ball well to left center field. Cunningham over to make the catch. Loney back to second base. But uh, having the chance to call so many of Ryan's games and his no hitters with the Angels, I think the the most poignant moment that I was able to witness that involved Ryan came in spring training. My son was about eight years old. And he brought his glove into the clubhouse down in Palm Springs. And I introduced him to Nolan Ryan. And Ryan took the glove, his little, you know, just a little, little league glove. He says, not a bad glove, but I think I got one better. He reaches into his nice cubicle and pulls out a brand new, uh, the glove was as big as my son. <laughs> <laughs> my uh, son is a baseball fan for the rest of his life. Oh, beautiful. And a Nolan Ryan fan. In fact, he was there for one of the no-hitters, and he kept score. And he's got that framed, and my son is now 45 years old. It's still up on the wall in his home in Davis, California. So they walk Barajas, and it'll be Kershaw with two on and two out here in the fourth inning. Well, Pickoff attempt in second base. Trying to catch him asleep out there. And ball four. So first and second for Kershaw. Tried to sacrifice his first time. That bunted into a fielder's choice. 
got 16 hits this year. He can swing the bat. 232 average. He really gives you a good at bat every time, so you have to be careful. As we've told you before, Kershaw going to Highland Park Texas High School, and Matt Stafford with the number one draft pick of the Lions at quarterback was his high school teammate. And Stafford had uh, quite a comeback effort today. Ground ball sharply on one hop to the third baseman, and Gonzalez able to flip the second for the fielder's choice and the final out of the fourth. Padres coming up, need two to tie. Bartlett, Hundley, and Guzman in the fourth. Trying to accomplish the pitching triple crown. Uh, who was the last pitcher to do that? And the answer, the Padres, Jake Peavy, four years ago. 119, 254 ERA, and 240 strikeouts for Peavy to win the pitching triple crown. And here's an example against Arizona nine consecutive strikeouts. And he almost had 10. Wow. Boy, I remember that game. Jake totally got, you know what, on the 10th. Check swing. Eric Burns, I believe it was, would have tied Tom Seaver for 10 consecutive strikeouts. And yes, it would have been a double if he would have hit that ball in the check swing. <laughs> a sarcastic double. Ground ball, one hop to Loney, and he's able to make it to the bag for the unassisted out. And Bartlett is gone. I'll tell you what, his ball was just exploding that game. Nine strikeouts, the slider, the fastball, great location, just. Mm. He was a bulldog, wasn't he? Yes, he was. Or is. Let's hope that uh, his injury problems are in the past and then he'll close out his career in an outstanding manner. Hundley struck out first time. Nick, like so many players before the game, down in the video room looking at Kershaw, studying how he is. Pitch to Hundley in past games. Lines it to left field. Well, that study pays off. The first hit of the game off Kershaw. Solid single to left for Nick Hundley. Wow, that, I'm right on the button on this. Half. Look, looks like a cutter in, and he's right on it. Good down, good position. Lines that ball in the left field. And did you see how far Rivera was? I, deep? I was going to say there was, was no no, no way he was going to catch it because yeah. he was close to the warning track. He's playing everyone that day. Yeah. Guzman struck out the first time. Well, the Padres bring the tying runner to the plate with one out here in the fourth, and a strike from Kershaw. Slider.
No, they got him. Hundley caught a no man's land, and Kershaw picks him cleanly. So much for a base runner. Well, it looked like he was going to go home. He's kind of leaning a little bit, and then all of a sudden, That's close. I mean, that was a, almost like a slide step kind of kick to first. So two out here in the Padre fourth. Base is clean. Fly ball lifted to left field. Rivera charging in and makes the catch. No runs a hit. No one left. We've completed four at Petco, and the Dodgers have a 2 0 advantage. Game recap brought to you by Murray Lamper Construction, as always. Find the truth in home remodeling with Murray Lamper Construction. See why that they're the company that you trust. Come on now. Visit MurrayLamper.com. Dick. <laughs> the old speed reading mud grant. <laughs> you could read all that fine print on the contract. Where they read <laughs> like the FedEx guy back in the day? Read yeah, that FedEx yeah. commercial? <laughs> <laughs> Two strikes to count on D. Gordon, leadoff man, starts the fifth inning against Lubke. Dodgers got their runs early, two runs in the first. A walk to Carroll, RBI double, Kemp to left center, and Kemp came home on mile single. Meanwhile, Kershaw allowing only one hit, the single by Hundley in the fourth. Chop to third, Gonzalez there, quick throw across, gets the speedy Gordon. Let's go back to the pickoff and analyze this uh, for us, Tony. Yeah, this is, to me, this is more of a block than the one that was called on LeBlanc because that's a sli his first move is, is a lean towards mm -hmm. home plate as if it's going to be a slide step, and then he just throws the ball to first base. And you saw Nick Hundley kind of bounce like he was going to second and then realize he was coming to first. That, to me, that's more of a block move. Than the one they caught on Wade LeBlanc on uh, Friday night. I was surprised Angel Hernandez being at second base. He probably had the best look <laughs> and uh, didn't call a block. <laughs> get out the tape. <laughs> Got a good block jaw over there. Now, so here, here's Wade. He just steps right to first base. Yep. Here's Chris. Yep. That's, a, that's a lean and then a move. To first. Hernandez was behind the plate when he called the ball count. Yeah. LeBlanc, mm -hmm. he's out at second base and had a pretty good look at that. Although it's really the first base umpire's call. call. Right. Carroll punches that one foul, and the count is one and two. And the second baseman, one out here in the fifth inning. Talking about MVPs and Cy Youngs and. Kind of shocking, Tony. You didn't win a Most Valuable Player award. 
hit enough homers. 394 didn't do no, it. No, that's not good. <laughs> not good enough. You gotta, you gotta drive in some runs and hit some balls out of the ballpark. Okay, here's my question to you, Tony. If you were to change your game to where you could turn on balls more and hit more home runs, which you could have done, right? You feel you could have done that? I, I, I again, I, I go back to Ted talking to Ted Williams. He was the one who made me realize that you, you had to hit, you had to try to. So that you can do the things that you really want to do. Okay, now my question to you is if you were to change your hitting approach that way, how many points on your average would you have sacrificed, do you think? Now, or before I talked to Ted, I thought 15, 20 points. Mm. But after, I, you didn't have to give him anything. And to me, that's, that's why in today's game, those guys are so highly coveted. Like a power pitcher, that, like a guy like Kershaw. On the offensive end, it's the Pujols, it's the Kemp's, it's the Bronze. Young it's Upton. Big, Upton, those are the type of guys that you, you, you want to try to be offensive. There's Carroll walking again, the second time he's walked. He scored the first time back in the first inning. Third walk from Lukey. Because I remember, uh, I think I was privy to lean in on one of those conversations with Ted. Uh, where he said to you that, you know, if you start pulling that inside pitch, now they're going to go away, and that's what you want. That's exactly what he said, but he didn't. He kind of gave it to you, and like, if you were worth your salt, you had to try to figure it out. But basically, that's what he was saying. And boy, you hit he, what, 16 that year? I hit, yeah, I hit uh, 14 that year, and he was absolutely right. It just made a complete difference. Well, here's a man who's got the tons of power. He's got an RBI double, and he sent a huge fly ball out. 390 feet to right center the last time. I mean, it just was way up there. It almost carried over the fence. This one's lined into the corner. Foul. In the words of Bob Euchre, that last ball that he hit sky high, uh, Euchre would have said that's a high enough that it should have a flight attendant on it. <laughs> Can't say stewardess anymore. Yeah. You know that. <laughs> He's kind of a unique guy offensively because teams in the outfield play him like a left-handed pull hitter. They play mm -hmm. him to hit the ball the other way, and he just got extreme power to right center field. But if you hang something on the end half, that's a ball he's going to turn. Pulls that one foul. Come to think of it, talking about flight attendants, we just were blessed by a terrific group with the Delta Airlines throughout the charter season, our 12 flights. And I think they're here at the ballpark today. Didn't they tell you Sunday they were coming out to the yard? They are. Brenda, Chris, Susie, Kristen. What a great job. Lefty. Remember, he always traveled with us. He was a coordinator and everything. A great crew. One and two to Kemp. Carroll at first base. And that one pulled softly to third. And right under the glove of Gonzalez and Kemp is safe. Well, Alberto hasn't missed many this year. And that one just uh, hung low. It's got to be an error. Although Dodger fans certainly would like to see that hit sign flash yeah. for Kemp. Yeah, that's just a good old fashioned. I came up too soon. And it is an error. So first and second with one out to Juan Rivera. Fly ball to right and a ground ball to second. So he's gone the opposite way both at bats. A little rumble of booze when the fans, uh, Dodger fans, see the E sign. That one fouled down by the Dodger bullpen. September 25th, certainly a historically a, a day where a lot of outstanding moments in baseball. Roger Maris tied Babe Ruth on this date with his 60th home run. We told you about Ryan's no hitter, Randy Jones, the first Padre to win 20 games on this date in 1975.
Two on, one out. Line drive, base hit. Here comes Carroll around third. It's 3 nothing. Dodgers. On to third goes Kemp. And a solid single by Juan Rivera. His 45th RBI of the year. So two times Carroll has walked and two times he's come around to score. You know, the one thing I noticed on that pitch a couple of times this afternoon, Corey Lukey has slowed up his arm action on the changeup. That looked like it was a changeup. It was up a little bit on contact, upper thigh area, and that spells trouble. Not the same arm action on his fastball breaking ball as on his changeup this afternoon. So first and third with one out and a run in three nothing and Miles drove in a run with a single in the first inning. Up high ball one. Well on this date in 1965 the real Mudcat mm, Jim yeah. yeah Jim Mudcat Grant won his 20th game and he nice. was the first African American. In the American League to win 20 games. Big fan of Jim Mudcat Grant. Follow back. What a great man. Good career. Really good career. He's from La Hoochie, Florida. And Vin Scully, I remember talking to him, the lad from La Hoochie. That's what he called him. <laughs> <laughs> when he was with the Dodgers. Wonderful pitcher. <laughs> Gary Cameron getting ready in the Padre bullpen as the Dodgers racking up the base hits now. Six hits, three runs. And a ball and a strike on Miles with the runners at the corners. Timing. Yeah. You know the fan down there. It's when the ball was clearly over his head. Then he leaped up yeah. like he was going to catch it. <laughs> I've got a great off-season moneymaker. We should have a. You know they have these fantasy camps. We should have foul ball fantasy camp. You see, there's a chance to make your next million. <laughs> Put people in situations where their uh, foul ball is coming their way. <laughs> one and two, and another foul. Watch out! That went off the first row. Caroms downstairs and a young lad is just walking down the aisle and it bounced right into his glove. That's good, right. Good on you. And that's the key. You have to bring your glove. So we could have the maybe we could start this foul ball catching school. We could uh, franchise it. Yeah. You girl go for it in Milwaukee. <laughs> <laughs> One and two. Ground ball to third. Gonzalez to second to first. Not in time. And the run scores. And an earned run as Kemp comes home. It's 4 nothing. Credit Miles with his second RBI today. Well, nobody feels worse out there than Alberto Gonzalez at third base. Going to his right and flipping a nice strike to Orlando Hudson. Well, Miles motored up the line well enough to beat the relay and earn the. RBI for nothing now Los Angeles. Loney doubled into the right field corner his last at bat. Tony I've got a question for you being the gold glover and it happens to the best of them but. Did you ever have a situation when you were camped under a ball in the outfield and just clanked. It? Yeah. I did. It happens to the best it of does. them. And you know what and, and you just hope that somebody will pick you up and help you get out of it. Right. Just like you described fly ball to right field. I'm camped under a can of corn, and my the thumb of my glove got caught. <laughs> I never opened it enough to catch it, and it just you know, boom, it just fell out of my uh, glove, and I just and yeah, you, you, know, you feel bad. You just hope your teammates yeah. can pick you up and get you out of the inning. Loney fouls that one high and away to left. And down the left field line, man. super catch. So you know when we had this foul ball catching school. You know, could, because some uh, of the fans are already pretty good at it. we have to have different degrees. Well, bachelor's, master's, doctorate. Very know, good. So that they can, you know, learn to catch, you know, without the glove. Yeah, yeah. you better be yeah. pretty darn good to catch without the glove. Without the glove. Yeah. And you match that with uh, Euchre's uh, pass ball school where he teaches <laughs> catchers how to commit pass balls. <laughs> and we've got something really rolling. 
One ball and one strike. Deloney. He just waited till it stopped, right? And wouldn't pick it up. Is that well, he no, he had, you know, he and Don and I, Don Dreisel and I, we actually had the franchise. I had uh, the San Fernando Valley and Don had Orange County. And you go out and you get these uh, big old sand pits, you know, and uh, you get these uh, cardio the euchre. You had to buy the equipment from euchre. You had these guns that shot the ball about 150 <laughs> miles an hour. And you put these little leaguers back there. You give them plenty of equipment. But, you, you know, they learn how to get out of the way of the ball so they can commit the pass balls in the spirit of Bob Euchre. <laughs> It, it didn't, you know, I thought it was going to really be a big money maker. Didn't take off, huh? No, it didn't. Yeah. <laughs> two balls, two strikes on Loney. Two more in for the Dodgers here in the fifth. That's in there. Strike three. Loney didn't like the call, but it was on the outside corner. Strikeout number five for Corey Lupke, but the Dodgers get two runs. One was earned on a couple of hits, and they leave one. You know, if a grand slam has hit this inning, the jackpot is up to an even $68,000. That could be coming your way. You have to enter, though, at 4SD.com. Good luck, Mr. Enberg. Yeah, it would be a shame if we didn't give that money away, huh? I mean, that's, uh, we're, we're running out of time yeah. here. Yeah. Uh, if not today, those Cubs pitchers, you know, walk the bases loaded in one of those sure. things and flirt with a chance to win it. Let's see, at the end of the year, the last game, It'll be, what would you say today, 68,000? 68,000 today. 69.5 on, on Wednesday, the last game. Denorthia. Then Hudson and Cunningham against Kershaw in the fifth. Denorthia sent a one-hopper back to the mound his first time. Fly ball right at the left fielder. Rivera for the first down. We started to tell you about uh, Kershaw and his high school teammate Matt Stafford, the uh, quarterback with the Detroit Lions. The Lions today played at Minnesota, were down 20 to nothing, and rallied to win 26-23. You know that Kershaw is following the successes of Stafford, who's been injured the first couple of years in the league, just as uh, Stafford cheering for him to win mm -hmm. the Cy Young. Hudson. Hit it sharply to third. Backhand play by Miles, the defensive play of the game to take a hit away. Fly ball, back of second. Carroll drifting out to make the catch. Two away, and Cunningham the hitter. Now the other thing about Clayton Kershaw is that uh, you know conditioning 
At the big league level, he's become a guy who's going to give you a lot of innings and go deeper into the game as far as pitch counts concerned. You know, early on they were a little tentative with him, but he's he's good for about 115, 120 pitches. Yeah. Cunningham takes a strike. Well, in the National League wild card race, Atlanta has lost again to Washington. Boy, the Nationals have closed with a lot of uh, victories this year. Three nothing Washington. Fly ball hit well to left field by Cunningham. That takes Rivera to the wall. Touch them all. Number three for Aaron Cunningham. And there goes Kershaw's shutout. It's four to one. And everyone scores big with that home run. Text Homer H O M E R to 269411 now for $10 off a concert at Harris Rincon. You turned on that one, Tony. Yeah, this looks like a little cutter inside. Got the barrel head out in front. Yeah, well, that home run emphasizes uh, the importance of the two runs that the Dodgers got in the top half of this inning. They still have a three run lead. Alberto Gonzalez. Struck out his first at bat. Good cut. One and one. I guess a guy like Kershaw, you really have to take advantage advantage of those pitches that that you get up in the zone. Because he's not going to throw too many mistakes. Not going to make many. And the numbers prove it. I mean, look at the numbers he's put up this year. We, we've documented that. So if you get one mistake. You better hammer it. It's the 15th home run allowed by Kershaw on the season. But here were two outs in the fifth inning. Economical, only 55 pitches mm -hmm. delivered. Did not go around. And the count is two and two on Alberto. Chop the third. Charging Miles. Got him. Close play, but Greg Gibson at first base calls him out. Bud Black going to go out and visit with the umpire. He thought Gonzalez had beaten it out. Aaron Cunningham beat one out of the ballpark. His third home run, it's four to one.
Let's go to our freeze cam brought to you by Coors Light, the world's most refreshing beer. The throw, the freeze. Mm. Yeah, here it is. There's the ball, and the foot is on the bag. So Gibson missed that one. Oh. Now, we apologized to him last night for being wrong on the call at second base. Well, he, today, he's wrong on the yeah. play at first. He, he beat that. Black was uh, about as animated in his argument with Gibson as we've seen him all season, but uh, did not get the heave ho. As we move to the sixth inning, Lukey facing Sands, Barajas, and Kershaw. Dodgers lead 4-1. You know, I've seen situations where it's, it's just a totally bad call, right? Manager runs out there. He's in his face. And all of a sudden, you see the umpire just say a little something. The umpire or the, the, the manager just goes back to the dugout. How many times has that happened where the umpire just says, you know what? I blew that one. So what, do, what can you argue? Argue, right? Nothing yeah, you can do. Who knows what was said there between Buddy and Greg Gibson. Three and one now to Sands, who has a single and a fly ball to left. And the count goes full as a fastball at 90. Luki has given up four runs, three of them earned on six hits. His 102nd pitch right there. Mm. So you figure this is probably going to be his last inning. He's uh, scheduled to lead off the bottom half of the inning. And he walks Sands. That's his fourth base on balls. Brings up Barajas, the catcher, has struck out, and he was intentionally walked in the fourth inning. That was after Loney had doubled, and with two outs, it brought up Kershaw, who grounded to third. So the breakdown there for Corey Lupke 103, Clayton Kershaw 57. Leadoff walk. Sands at first base, and uh, Hundley's going to go out and talk to Lupke. Looks like he overthrew that last pitch. Well, usually to the right handed hitter, if it is up and away, sometimes the elbow will drop a little bit. You push the baseball, and it leaks up and away. I'll tell you, there's a guy who lives and dies with every pitch. Darren Balsley. Man, you could see the frustration. When he's up and pacing in the dugout. Yeah, these are his kids, and yeah. he's got mm -hmm. so Absolutely. much invested in every arm. That's out of play. And Harang, in his post-game comments last night, credited, credited Balsley as soon as the the trade was made in the off-season. Balsley got together with Harang, said, "I've been studying your work. I think there are a couple of things we can correct that'll make you better." And he said. Right from day one, Ballsley was there to help mm -hmm. Harang have this really great comeback season. Former pitcher himself, Ballsley, and many feel that uh, he has the credentials, just like Black is a pitching coach, yeah. that Ballsley could be a top manager yeah, someday. Darren, Darren managed in the minor leagues in the Blue Jays organization. One and two now to Barajas. That's the kind of confidence your pitchers have to have. Just like hitters with a hitting coach, same with the pitching coach. Those pitchers want to have confidence in their coach to be able to go to and ask them things or for him to be able to point things out to them. The one two pitch. Foul back. Especially with a young staff because pitching coach a lot of times, the pitching coach and the catcher are your eyes. They see when things maybe get out of whack or you know, you're not as far forward on your release point or like you said elbow gets underneath a little bit. Another foul. If you're just joining us, the Dodgers got two in the first inning. A walk to Carroll, an RBI double by Matt Kemp, and he came home on Miles RBI single. They scored two more in the fifth. The Dodgers a walk again to Carroll. An error charged to the third baseman Alberto Gonzalez an RBI single Rivera. The other run came in on a fielder's choice. One of the runs unearned. Padres only run Aaron Cunningham's third home run of the season. Clayton Kershaw. 
allowing the Padres only two hits that home run and a single by Nick Hundley as he goes for his 21st win of the year Kershaw top Cy Young candidate struck him out six strikeouts now for Lukey. he gets Barajas twice here comes Kershaw Hey Padre fans, see and experience real props and costumes from the epic film at the Lord of the Rings in concert October 13th. It's at the Valley View Casino Center, 3500 Sports Arena Boulevard. See the movie in HD with a live musical score by the Munich Symphony. Tickets will be available at Ticketmaster.com. Funded high in the air, and Hunley can't quite get there. Do you see Corey Lukey? Corey Lukey was halfway in between the chalk line and that SD on deck circle. Busting his little heart to try to help out on that foul ball. Well, maybe a third of it. He still tried. Yeah, oh yeah. One strike to count on Kershaw. He might try the old butcher boy here. Mm -hmm. No. Good bunt. The underhand flip by Guzman to Hudson covering. And the sacrifice successful. Sands moves up. Two sacrifices uh, attempted by Kershaw and one successful. That's 11 sacrifice punts on the season to lead the Dodgers. So he helps himself with the bat as well and has 16 hits. Nice D. Done. Gordon. I'm oh, sorry, Dick. Nicely done. He put it down in the perfect spot. Gordon is 0 for 3. He's trying to extend his hitting streak, which is at 11 games, hitting 400 in the last 11. He's popped up, struck out, and grounded to third base. 4 1 Dodgers here in the sixth. You know, if I was pitching to D. Gordon, I'd pitch him up in the zone. Have him hit the ball in the air. That's what Luke, he's done. He's gone up in the zone and, and sliders away, and he's, he's really good in giving Gordon fits today. Yeah, it, you make a good point. If you're ahead in the count, the slider down and away, he'll swing over and miss. You know, that's when you want to go for the wipeout pitch, right? Yeah. But you see the, uh, the the outfield playing very shallow against D. Gordon, especially in left and in center. And playing him to go the other way in the air. 2-1 delivery. This is away, 3-1. Jamie Carroll's on deck. Sands with a leadoff walk and a sacrifice at second base for the Dodgers. Two gone. Three and one is in there. First half of the season at Albuquerque, Gordon hit 333. Flies that one to left, playing shallow as Cunningham. And the line drive captured by. The Padre left fielder. No runs. A man left for the Dodgers. Middle of the sixth. 4 1 LA.
Visit us in Pacific Beach or online at Massey.com. Kershaw goes to work in the last of the sixth inning, and Luis Martinez will hit for Lupke. And he takes strike one. Scoreboard has six hits for the Dodgers. They have five. There's Lukey. Four runs, three earned, five hits. Walk four, struck out six. And another strike to Martinez. Kershaw has walked only one, and that was Lukey. High fly ball. Right field. Shallow toward the line. Sands is there. For the first out. First out one walk and he struck out five batters. Two hits. One a home run by Cunningham. For the Padre lone run. Four to one. Maben. Hard ground ball to short and a strikeout today. It's low again. These hitters counts here off Kershaw. You really don't know what to look for. You know you're ahead 2 and 0. Showing the ability today to throw the breaking ball for a strike, the slider, throw the change up. Foul back 2 and 1. Was that a fastball that he could have hit? Fastball at 94. Another fastball well placed. Two and two the count. I think he's been a little upset with himself on that last fastball. Right over the top of that fouled it off. Well, you know that's another point when you know a pitcher's on his game. Falling behind 2-0 now quickly 2-2. Yeah. We got yeah. him. Off speed. The slider. Breakout number six. Our leaderboard is brought to you by Los Primos, home of the Monster Burrito. Get your $5 meal deal at Los Primos. We have the wild card race. Braves lost, Cardinals won. So only one game back or St. Louis. They've made quite a rush down the stretch, haven't they? Yeah. And the Red Sox continue to have trouble winning. The race are only a half game back, and the Angels are still in the picture. Two off the lead. Love the wild card race. It's another division. It's awesome. And word is that uh, they'll add an extra wild card coming uh, in a year or two. So that uh, that'll liven interest uh, mm -hmm. for two more teams and maybe more. Hey, make it like the NBA. Out of the 30 teams, 28 make the playoffs. <laughs> <laughs> Watch out. Bartlett fouls it back. I would like to see them do something and take that extra team out of what was it the central that yeah. has one extra team. Yeah. Some type of realignment. That's a swinging bunt. If it stays fair, that's a base hit. It is foul. Kershaw making a slide, realized he wasn't going to be able to throw out Bartlett, let it roll, and uh, it took a Los Angeles curl off the field of play. That's a nice recognition there by Kershaw because. He was not going to be able to throw Bartlett out at first base on that. They decide to let it go and it turns and goes foul. Oh, 
Yeah, showing you what kind of athlete he is. That was a perfect mm -hmm. slide right yeah, there. Pop up slide. Yeah. Laid down a couple of bunts. He's got the sweet chin strap working, doesn't he? That beard. A ball and two strikes to Bartlett. Still got good velocity, 95 on that last pitch. Change up in the dirt, two and two. That last pitch is one of the few we've seen today where he just kind of overthrew that just a hair. Ground ball toward the hole. It goes under the glove of Miles, the shortstop. Gordon throws him out. Close play. Gordon showing a big arm to throw out Bartlett. Nicely done. Padres are gone in order in the sixth. 4-1 LA. Subway celebrated summer and now celebrating fall with the savory flavor of barbecue pulled pork. When you buy a Subway barbecue pulled pork sub and any drink, you celebrate with a free bag of Lay's chips. An offer this week did last long right through the baseball season because at Subway you eat fresh. Luke Gregerson comes in to work the seventh inning for the Padres, a member of the top bullpen in the major leagues 297 the ERA collectively for the relief core for San Diego Atlanta and the Yankees are a 299 last time out for Luke was at Colorado on Wednesday through an inning surrendered one hit an 11 pitch effort for Luke he'll face Jamie Carroll the pest has been just that two walks he scored both times Line to short his only official at bat. Then it's Kemp and Rivera with the Dodgers. Well, there's the score right on his jersey backwards 4 1. And a strike. Slider that hangs high and inside, one and one. Both times today, Jamie Carroll, that he walked, he was down in the camp. Both times worked it back to his favor, got the walk, scored twice. Two and one. Slider just missed. Trying to bait me over there, Mr. Renberg? <laughs> no, no. I just thought I heard you groan. <laughs> Shortstop Bartlett, the cross. And the other thing you like about Carroll as a veteran of many years, he still runs up that line as if he 
going to beat out every ground ball. And here's Matt Kemp. Kemp doubled in a run in the first, scored himself on a single by Miles. 390 foot out to center. That was just a towering high fly ball that just kept carrying but stayed in the yard. Safe on an error by Alberto Gonzalez at third base in the fifth. And he scored as well. Two of the runs of the four played it by L.A. today. Starts with a fastball strike. Another fastball, same spot. Mm -hmm. Not mess messing around this time, just jumped ahead of him with two fastballs. And Kemp knows that Gregerson's known for a slider, right? He's got to have that in the back of his head. Another, now well, that was the slider, mm -hmm. yeah. Gets him on three pitches. As we remarked uh, during this series, Kemp, it's amazing that he's. Had this kind of season, 325 batting average when he strikes out so much. That's 156 times he struck out. Coming up, the San Diego Hyundai dealer seventh inning stretch. You get more MPG and more value, and you double the warranty. Shop online at San Diego Hyundai Dealers.com. Slider strike to Rivera. So Luke Gregerson in the zone. Rivera singled in a run his last time. Over but low, one and one. Seems to me that Luke's pitches this afternoon, they have more bite, downward tilt to it, and that means he's staying on top of the baseball. Remember earlier, he told me he was kind of working around it a little bit. There's a good slider as well. Off the head of the bat. And it's just a little bit. I mean, Tony's probably almost like. You know your swing if it's off just a little bit. It, yeah, it's going to mess you up a little bit. Well, right. for Luke, he was just working around the baseball a little bit too much rather than staying on top of it and getting that good rotation. And more importantly, it gives the hitter a better look. You can work around mm -hmm. it. And you know, we've been talking about Kershaw, all his pitches coming from the same spot, same with Luke. Fly ball, shallow and right to Norfia. camped under it. Gregerson works a solid. One, two, three, seventh inning, stretch half of the seventh. Padres will bring up Hundley, Guzman, and Denorfia, needing three to tie.
National Anthem as we go beyond the box score here at Petco Park. Brought to you by Discount Tire, where America saves on tires. In the wild card race, the Braves shut out by the Nationals, and Mike Morris continues right to the final game to have a great season. And the Cardinals edge the Cubs, came from behind to win. So St. Louis, only one game behind Atlanta with uh, final series to go, three games left. The battle for the wild card spot. Bottom of the seventh inning, the Padres against Kershaw have Huntley, Guzman, and Denorfia scheduled. Only two hits allowed by this outstanding 23-year-old. A home run by Cunningham and a single by Huntley. Only three, 73 pitches for Clayton Kershaw. 24 balls, 49 strikes. Fred Olchen comes in defensively for Rivera in left field for the Dodgers. Attendance has been announced 32,387 and so the three game series attracted over 105,000. So the Padres and Dodgers thank the fans who have made this an excellent uh, weekend that turned styles clicking as the Padres have moved over the two million mark. There's no doubt about our city and our county and the surrounding areas they love their baseball and they've been patient and they've been more than supported this year. It is going to really get exciting when the Padres have that season yep. where they they're the ones looking into the playoffs. Filed out of play by Hundley. And they're building that tradition in the minor leagues. Kids are getting used to winning and winning playoffs and winning league championships. Mm -hmm. One hopper and it's two and one to Hundley. Did you see Barajas? I did. He, like he framed it. The ball hit out in front of home plate. Barajas just stuck that glove right there, and it was almost like he was framing it for the umpire. Yeah. It's pretty funny. Yeah, he's having a little chuckle himself. <laughs> well, he'd be really hard to hit if that counted. He could bounce the ball up there like in cricket. Ground ball right side. Easy chance for Carroll over to Loney. 4 3 for the first out. Guzman is struck out and fly to left. Well, Ian Kennedy and the Diamondbacks won easily last night, 15 to 2. So Kennedy of the Arizona Diamondbacks has 21 wins, and Kershaw trying to match that 21 so that he indeed would have the pitching triple crown. He's got the ERA title locked up and the strikeout. Lead also is uh, in concrete. He has struck out six today. He has 248 strikeouts on the season. It's an interesting list of only four men in history that are this young, under age 24, who have struck out. 240 and 120 games. Only four have done it. Kershaw being the fourth. Out of play. Dwight Gooden in 1985. Burt Blyleven was only 23 and 73. And Vita Blue back in 1971 with the Oakland A's. Pretty good company. Huh. How about, you know, the one guy that's, I mean, they're all obviously had good career, great careers. But Vita Blue, my gosh, when he was on back in the day. That was a left-hander that was that, lights out. That leg kick, and he could hit a little bit too now. Yeah. Yep. Man from Mississippi. Yep. The blue Moon Odom and Vita Blue, <laughs> Catfish Hunter. High fly ball, just missed that one to center field. Kemp now cruises in under it for the second out. The. Uh, this date, of course, end of the season, and had to have a chuckle in 1965. Kansas City were the A's then, right? And uh, not exactly a great season. So, as a publicity stunt to, to sell tickets, what do they do? They go out and get Satchel Page to come in and ah. pitch. Satchel is somewhere between 59 and 65. You know, there are different <laughs> notations on that, but he was at least 59. 
There's a little looper beyond second. Carroll goes out and makes the catch. That's the end of the Padres in the seventh inning. One, two, three. And we'll be back with old Satchel Page at Petco in a moment. Padres are excited to announce the opening of the wines at the park presented by Donovan's uh, located near section 106 on the main concourse between home and third base wines at the park offer nice selection of sparkling white and red wines for sale by the bottle previously wines were only available by the glass and you still can buy it by the glass there fans may purchase a bottle and then they take this plastic carafe and it's a nice heavy weighted uh, plastic. With your wine and your glasses to your seats to enjoy. For those that like a nice sip of good wine and their price ranges allow uh, everyone to take advantage. We're talking uh, to Dave Roberts. You know, he uh, owns a winery up in uh, Napa. They make a very nice Cabernet. Their label is Red Stitch, which is uh, with the baseball stitches, the red stitches, a clever title for their wines. And uh, they're making a uh, I think Parker gave them a 9091 their last uh, vintage. So nice. It's good stuff. Josh Spence comes in. We haven't seen him for a long time. The left hander from Melbourne in Australia facing Aaron Miles. Miles has knocked in a couple of runs today with a single and a ground out. 2 and 0. Oh. Miles Loney and Sands to bat for the Dodgers here in the eighth. L.A. leads 4-1. Kershaw working on a two-hitter. 3-0. and oh. so Gregerson goes in inning and retires all three hitters and strikes out one. Three balls and a strike. Spence has not been on the mound uh, for a week. He pitched last Sunday. Ground ball right side. Hudson gobbles it up. One away. You know, Tony, I've got a question for you. Since Josh Spence is out there, the soft tossing left hander, and being that you were a 338 career hitter, correct? Yeah. What, what type of pitcher drove you nuts the most? Was it the hard throwing? No, I'm thinking opposites. Now you're left-handed. Yeah. The the soft tossing righty, like a Tewksbury, or the hard throwing righty, or did you? I could hit any right-handers. I really didn't didn't did, bother me. Didn't Lefties, bother a guy like Josh Benson was more of a challenge because you know you're facing left-handed pitching. The objective is to keep that front shoulder in. And really, the only question I had. Line foul, Loney. 
Only question I had facing the left-hander was could he throw his fastball with movement back inside? Because mm. back then, most lefties tried to get you out of the way. And right. It really worked right into what I was trying to do. And so if I was facing a guy like Smith, I just want to know, can he run his fastball back in on my hands or not? And if he couldn't, then I went up to the plate with a, you know, kind of a calm sense knowing that eventually he's going to throw something out there that, right. I, that I could hit. So. A line drive to Guzman. I just, I'm smiling as you say that, Tony, because it, you're so matter of fact, that, and that's why you were such a great hitter. And, and, and go back to our friend Ted Williams, you know, the toughest thing to do in sports, uh, hit a round ball with a round bat squarely. And, and uh, to be able to walk up to the plate with that kind of hitter's confidence and, hey, you know what? I, I can hit almost everybody. Yeah. <laughs> It takes time to get to that point, and that's that's why Kershaw's so impressive to get to that point at 23. Padres make a pitching change brought to you by the Law Tigers. San Diego's motorcycle injury lawyers who ride. It's Eric Cameron coming in. <laughs> Your home base for great auto loan rates and all star service as well. Find out more at missionfed.com. Cameron making his 14th appearance. He's been uh, in the bullpen for a while without any activity. 12 innings total with nine hits and five runs allowed. Two outs, bases empty here in the Dodger eighth. Jerry Sands the batter a single and a walk. One for two flight out to left. Extending his hitting streak to a career high 13. Slider didn't quite catch the inside corner. That one's in there, one and one. So, Tony, when was it, you know, there's this whole path that any career you follow. You know, you, you start maybe with a dream, and you hope you're going to be good someday, and then you you start to have some success, and people think that you're good, and and maybe I'll really be good someday. And then there's that day where the lights come on, and you know what? I am good. Wow. When did that happen for you? It took a while. I, I, I got to the big league when I was 22. When I was 25, I thought I was good enough to be an everyday guy and have success. But that's that thing that teams are looking for. They're trying to speed that clock up, trying to get guys to to feel like they belong. And, and, and you want to make progression. You want to kind of get better every year and get more consistent every year. But it but took you three or four major leagues. Three, yeah, three, four years to get to that point. That's a strike, three and two. The Sands, bases empty, two out here in the Dodger eighth, a 4 1 LA lead. One thing I really love what the Padres are doing is they're giving these guys, these young guys, a chance to play together and work together and win together. 
All so, the way to the screen, ball four. So they hopefully by the time that they get here, they will expect to win, not hopefully they will expect. To win. It's nice that they brought those three young pitchers up from San Antonio. They're all 21, 22 years of age, and for a week and a half they're wearing the big league uniform, yep. hanging out with the guys, hearing how the game is played, yep. feeling how it's played. Getting all that all that wide-eyed stuff out of the way. Mm -hmm. Been there. They yeah, got that they, to think about exactly. in the offseason. Exactly. That's exactly right. Here's Barajas. Intentionally walked and struck out twice. Two out Sands at first, and he pours the fastball in there. Boy, that really does calm down the intimidation factor, doesn't it? Like you said, when they're around the atmosphere, yeah. and, you know, maybe a year or two before they come up, up here, but they're used to it. Well, think about it when you first came up to the big leagues and you walked in that clubhouse. How'd you feel? Wow. Exactly. <laughs> Yeah. And that's what you want to do. You want to get that. I can't believe I'm here factor out of the way so that you can really focus in on trying to become the best baseball player that you can be. That's why I think you see a lot of fathers who have kids that hang out at the ballpark. They go on to be big leaguers and that. OK, I've been here. I was here when I was 8, 10, 12, 15. You know, yep. it's no big deal to them. Of course, talent comes into play. No question. Yep. Yeah, I remember the the Boone boys that yeah. are coming out. And uh, Bob Boone was the catcher with the uh, Angels at the time. You see Trevor Hoffman's uh, mm -hmm. kids working out in the ballpark when he was in Milwaukee now here. Orlando Hudson's young son. You know, that's a nice advantage. Hit well by Barajas deep to left field. Back goes Cunningham. Gone. Six to one Los Angeles. Number 16 for Barajas. RBIs 46 and 47 for the big catcher. And the way Kershaw is pitching that uh, all but seals the deal. Left that inside. Wanted that ball away and left it inside. And Rajas drove this ball out from straight away left. About the same spot where Cunningham hit his home run. So Hamram gives up the walk to Sands and the home run to Barajas with two outs. Kershaw looks at ball one. Eric yeah, Cameron very inconsistent not only on the fastball but the breaking ball that breaking ball down and in he wanted it down and away. Right into the wheelhouse of Barajas. You know getting back to fathers and sons. When I was in Seattle 1992 we make a trip to Detroit. Tiger Stadium. Cecil Fielder, right? Who's this little pudgy kid taking BP? <laughs> <laughs> it was Prince. Yeah. Imitating other hitters. Yeah, exactly. You think about uh, another father son combination growing up and watching his dad play the Griffies. Yeah, that's right. And then playing together. How about that yeah. story? Back to back Jacks. Yeah. Same game. Yeah. And they're the Gwyns, too. You know, that's they, right. they're for father son. I remember Anthony running around the clubhouse. Kershaw walks and Hammond struggling here. A walk, home run, walk. Brings up D. Gordon. That gives Gordon a chance to extend his hitting streak. He might have thought uh, that his 11-game uh, string was broken. 0 for 4, but he gets another chance here. Darren Balsley out to talk to Hammond. And it is. It's a huge advantage to have to be around a major league clubhouse and be around major league players. Who is your son's Anthony's favorite player? Will Clark. Will Clark. He just loved Will Clark in, in the All Star game in, uh, uh, I think it was in Oakland in '87. He took Will took him under his wing and took him every round. Oh, nice. Awesome. Strike to Gordon. Kids don't forget that, do they? No, they don't. And when someone is that nice to a young player or just a, a young person, then that person wants to be nice when they get to that place in life. And your son has been a model of doing just that. He just, uh, he watched and he's nice to everybody. Thanks. 
0 and 2 to Gordon. A two run blast by Barajas here in the eighth inning, and the Dodgers have a 6 1 lead. Kershaw six outs away from his 21st win. One ball, two strikes to Gordon. Ooh, over but low. Josh Spence got Miles to ground out and Loney to line out. And then Hammond came in to pitch to Sands, walked him, gave up the two run homer to Barajas, has walked Kershaw. And now a fly ball to center. Maven playing shallow has to hustle back to make the catch. So 0 for 5 for Gordon. Hit the ball on the nose the last two times for out. Two runs, one hit, and a man left. Petco Park today and our salute to the military is brought to you by Coleman University a military friendly school. Well we were talking about the father son combination for the Seattle Mariners Ken Griffey senior against Kirk McCaskill this is 21 years ago goes to left center field for the home run like father like son how about junior his daddy watches same spot. Wow. Back-to-back -back home runs by the Griffies, father and son. How great is that? Padres in the last of the eighth inning. Orlando Hudson hit the ball hard down the third baseline first time up, but Miles was able to dive and glove it, throw him out, and he's popped to second. Cunningham with the home run off Kershaw, one of two hits allowed by the 23-year-old lefty. And then Gonzalez here in the eighth inning. Now the comfort of a five run lead Kershaw. Dodgers scoring in pairs today two in the first two in the fifth and two in the eighth. Still only going to be Kershaw's 85th pitch right here. Mm -hmm. Been in control. That's in goes. One and two. Recently married uh, in the offseason, Kershaw. That one, uh, he did not go. And they spent their honeymoon in Zambia. And uh, he was very taken by, you know, the poverty in that mm -hmm. African country. And he and his wife have a char charitable connection. Zambia, nice to hear. Line drive, base hit. That's into the... 
left field area. Can Hudson get two out of it? Here comes the throw by Olchen. And Hudson in with a trouble head first. Third hit of Kershaw. He had been successful in retiring seven in a row since the last hit, Cunningham's home run. He just didn't get it in enough. He threw him a couple of sliders trying to get him to swing. He didn't. He tried to get in on him and Hudson lines it into the corner for a double. Cunningham a 360 foot home run to left field his last time. Home run number three. Ball one. Yeah, the Padres need a big crooked number here to catch the Dodgers. 6 1 LA. That ball's hit well. Left center field and Olchen giving ground. He's there. Hudson tags. Here comes the throw offline and he advances to third. Chance to pick up a run on an up. Padres got to think in larger terms down 6 1. Gonzalez has struck out and was out on a questionable call at first base the last time on a swinging bunt to third. Replay showed that he was safe, but called out by Gibson, the umpire at first. Infield will play back. Gladly trade and out for a run. Still got the heater, 94. You know, even though this is a situation where Hudson's run really doesn't matter, still you'd like to see some execution. You'd like to see Gonzalez get a ball here, you know, hit it up the middle, hit it somewhere where they can get this run across. Breaking ball strike, a slider, one and one. Clayton Kershaw this afternoon has just been behind five hitters this afternoon. Five hitters. That would account for. 91, 90, getting ready to throw his 90 second pitch here going into the eighth inning. Puts in down the line at third, one out. There's that big slow curve that doesn't quite drop into the zone. Two and one. So fastballs at 94, 95, that curveball at 73. And the slider in between. In between. Yeah. Exactly. We've got some fastball in here. Line drive left field. Over goes Olchen. Can't get there. It's all the way to the wall. Hudson walks in from third. And rounding second and heading for third is Gonzalez. He's got a triple. Six to two. The Dodgers lead is carved by one. And Gonzalez at third with one out. That's his 32nd RBI of the year. Second time this inning where Kershaw did not make the pitch he wanted to, did not execute. Talking about mistakes, two times this inning that the Padres have capitalized. Orlando Hudson and now Alberto Gonzalez. Alberto's second triple of the season. Kyle Blanks will bat for Hamron. That's what I was saying. You'd like to see him cash this in because not only, you know, do you want to try to work your way back in the game, but if you don't. You still want to do some damage. You know, they know Kershaw's trying to win this triple crown. Hey, you want to put some runs on the board against him, make him earn it. Stanley Chanson, who struck out the side on Friday night in his one inning of work in the series, is the first up in the bullpen for LA. Well, Blank's trying to get Gonzalez home and reduce. The Dodger lead to 6 3. And here comes Mattingly to the mound. The slow walk is the giveaway. Ninety three pitches for Kershaw. The fans are booing. Uh, those are the Dodger fans. They want to see Kershaw complete the game themselves. He's given up an RBI triple to Gonzalez after Hudson went off the inning with a double, and that'll be all for Kershaw. 
his final game of the regular season. And he gets a standing ovation from the fans behind the Dodger dugout. Not only for his effort today, but for his pitching on this season. What a year for a 23 year old. Again, one of only four in history under 24 to strike out more than 240 and win 20 games. at the park where you can enjoy quality fresh Mexican food and happy hour seven days a week. Jansen converted catcher overpowering on Friday night struck out the side and Will Venable now will bat for blanks as Bud Black sends up a left handed batter runner at third one out. Ball one. He has an intimidating fastball this Young man. Looks like the Dodgers have a closer quality in him. Although he's the setup man uh, this year. Whoa, there goes the bat into right field. At least it didn't go into the crowd <laughs> as did Alberto Gonzalez. Gee, well, he just took a little side step, step to the side, let that ball, that bat go flying. By him. Yeah. Just a little step to the side. So one ball, one strike to Venable. One out. Gonzalez down the line from third. There it goes again. Oh my. That one lands on the facing. And bounces into the crowd, and the fan goes uh, over and makes a catch on one hop. <laughs> now that's a San Diego fan now. <laughs> they don't duck that bet. They charged it right off the top of the barrier. Why does this guy come down and make the catch? That <laughs> I'm going to say this is the first time I've seen Will Vittable hit with no gloves on in a, in a while. Sometimes without some batting gloves, that's what happens. It gets a little that pine tar on your bat gets a little slick. Ball and two strikes. We're gonna have to add bat catching to our uh, school. That you know that foul ball catching. Now we got to learn how to catch bats, bats as well. Too. They, now we've got it really. Now we're talking multi millions now. That's the hook. Yeah, we'll, the we'll, bat we'll use that guy as an example on how to do it. Poster poster child. And choking up is Venable trying to get the run in from third. Two and two. Strike three called. The four men faced by Jansen in the series, four strikeouts. It's only 23. That cut fastball at 95, 96, sometimes even 97, is really tough to hit, especially with that slider and changeup. But like I mentioned the other night, if this kid can really harness the control with that type of cutter, look out. Well, he's 
imposing on the mound 6 5 and 257 from Curacao. They produced some nice uh, little league teams. Mm -hmm. Maven swing and a miss at a 96 mile an hour fastball. I see that number 74, not uh, a common number in baseball, but I have to think of my old partner Merlin Olson when I see 74. Talk about a gentle giant. Well, that's a lot of man coming at you when he <laughs> takes a step toward the plate. He's and a, it's it's e it's easy gas. Yeah, it is. There's not a whole lot of effort behind it. Gonzalez at third, two outs. Two balls and a strike to Maven, who is grounded hard to short and struck out twice. That's the one thing in the offseason. Uh, Maven, he's eager to improve. He's had a terrific year in many ways, but he's got to cut down on the strikeouts. Two and one. Inside, three and one. He didn't a chance to play a full year in the big leagues. I mean, a full year in the big leagues. I I'm sure there'll be things that he'll go back to this fall or this winter and, and know that, that he could do a better job. And that's, that, again, that's one of them. As you get your playing time, you're going to get more comfortable and more confident. Three and one on the inside corner. 95 again. 123 times he struck out this year. Gonzalez still at third after the RBI triple. Strikes him out. Well, he comes in and repeats his performance of Friday night. Five up, five down, all on strikeout for Kenley Jansen. Like Kershaw, only 23. Well, the Cubs come in first of three to close out the season tomorrow night. And tomorrow, those of you 25,000 in attendance will take home a 2011 Padres team photo. So, hope you'll get yours. Visit Padres.com for tickets. The team photo to remember this 2011 season. You all have your favorites. So that'll be included, of course. Andrew Carpenter is the pitcher in the ninth inning for the Padres. Picked up on waivers here this final month of the year. Well, it's been a while since Drew's been, Andrew has been out there. The 18th in Arizona, and you know what? It's getting down to the end of the season. There's the uh, expanded rosters, a lot of pitchers down there, so make the most of it. 
as I mentioned for Corey Luke, you're right, last start of the year, last one, best one. Well, this this might be the last chance for Andrew Carpenter to show what he's got. Carpenter will face Carroll, Kemp, and Rivera in the top of the ninth inning. 6 2, Donchers lead it. Scored early, two in the first, added two in the fifth, and two on the home run by Barajas in the eighth. Jamie Carroll has walked twice and scored both times. Takes a strike. Go for two. He's lying to short and grounded to short. Fouled out of play. 0 and 2 the count. The Angels we mentioned are just a couple of games out of the wild card race, but they need to win. They had the lead, but Oakland has taken a 6-5 lead in the ninth inning in Anaheim. Slider away. Carroll works the count to two and two. Just joining us, Atlanta has lost. St. Louis has won, so the Cardinals only one back of Atlanta for the wild card. Strike three called. Carroll took it on the outside corner. And that brings up Matt Kemp, who scored two of the Dodger runs. RBI double in the first and scored. Uh, Miles single. Safe on an error by Gonzalez in the fifth and came in to score on the ground out. of MVP and the Dodgers are faithful might even be uh, joined in by some of the Padre fans who appreciate what camp has done this year tough as it may be to yeah. cheer for somebody in that blue you got to be impressed with the year that he's had but in this town it's hard to put those hands together <laughs> <where somebody's laughs> We We're in the Dodger blue. We just don't raise our kids that way, do we? <laughs> Ground ball to short. Right at Bartlett. And he throws out Kemp. Uh, Kemp goes one for five in the game today. And that all but eliminates him from winning the batting crown. You know, I have to get awfully hot. Three games left at Arizona. Where he might like those confines I was now. I say, yeah, in the, in the environs of Chase Field, you betcha. Trent Olchin bats for the first time. Juan Rivera started the game, hit cleanup, and went one for four with an RBI single. Padres, uh, two runs, four hits, and three thrown bats today. <laughs> As they trail 6 2 to the Dodgers. I never think I've seen a guy two in a row like that. I've seen it. Have you, Tony? Yeah. What was it, an ice storm? Uh, it was here. It was in San Diego. And uh, I just remember after the second one, it was a visiting team and the fans started booing. You know, yeah. And I was, I was going to say it when Will was hitting me. You swung the bat twice and it's gone flying out of your hands. It's kind of hard to take that third swing. <laughs> not know if it's going to go flying. Incredible took the strike three. Took strike three, and that's what, what the hitter. I believe he's with the Giants. He did. He did the same thing. In the course of 20 years, you see a lot. I saw Jeffrey Leonard break 14 bats in a three-game uh, series. <laughs> back man. <laughs> oh, and two. The count to Olchin. Fouled. No, it was uh, in the dirt. He swung at it and strikes out. Put out goes 2-3. That's it. Carpenter works a 1-2-3 ninth inning with a couple of punch outs. 
Last call for the Padres. Bartlett, Hundley, and Guzman coming up. Battle bottom of the ninth inning. Nobody beats El Cajon Ford. You can visit them at Broadway and Main or at El Cajon Ford.com. Four runs were in for the Dodgers when Barajas came up in the eighth inning with a man on with a walk and takes Eric Cameron into the left field bleachers to make it at that time six to one. The Padres got to run back in the bottom of the eighth inning, and that's where we stand six two. Javi Guerra, who has become the closer, picked up his 20th save on Friday night. Facing Bartlett, Hundley, Guzman, and uh, for the Padres, hopefully more here in the last of the ninth. 0 for 3 is Bartlett, struck out, grounded to first, and good play made at shortstop by Gordon the last time. Fouled into the second deck. So the Dodgers, true to form in this 2011 season, beating the Padres 12. Out of 17, but just not allowing the Padres many scores. They shut them out 2 nothing on Friday. Padres got three runs last night in the 3 nothing shutout, and down goes Bartlett. Ninth man to strike out today. Kershaw got six, Jansen two, and now Guerra, the first out in the ninth. Goes up Hundley. You know, Guerra's been a pretty good story for the Dodgers this year as well. A kid coming from double A. 20 out of 21 save opportunities. 25 years old. Friendly a line single in the fourth inning off Kershaw, the first hit off Kershaw, gave up only four, takes a strike. Going to quickly duck in the. I know you've just been waiting with bated breath back home uh, for the. The payoff on the Satchel Page story. I'm going to try to duck that in and ducking a single to center field is Hundley. He's got a two hit game. It was a publicity stunt. They go out and they get Satchel Page, 59 years of age or older, just to sell tickets. Page pitches three innings and allows one hit <laughs> at 59 or maybe 65. You're never too old. Guzman up. Padres need a couple more base runners to bring the tying run to the plate here in the ninth. Guzman has struck out and flied out twice. Back in the lineup uh, after losing a week's worth of uh, work with that sore neck. Average down to 309. Got his best hitting with men in scoring position, but no opportunities today for him. 2 and 0. Oh.
The Northie on deck. Hundley with a Padres fifth hit. Dodgers with six. Three and zero. Oh. Now remember uh, the series midseason, Dodger Stadium. Guerrero but walked the bases loaded and mm -hmm. then got out of it in a one nothing game. And he walks on four pitches. Guzman. Now that flickering flame of hope a little brighter now as two are on with one out. And Denorfia steps up. 0 for 3. Pop up fly out and a tapper to the mound. Tying run in the on deck circle is Orlando Hudson. And Lee pushed the second on the walk to Guzman. One out. That's a strike. 94 on his fastball. You yeah, almost have to take one right there. You just watch Guzman on four pitches. You know you're pretty sure you know what you're going to get. You almost have to take one. One and one. Thirty two thousand three eighty seven on this Sunday at Petco. Padres trying to rally here in the last of the ninth. Check swing and it's out of the zone two and one. Aguera after striking out Bartlett. Gives up the single to center field off the bat of Nick Hundley has walked Guzman in four pitches. And now two and one Denorfio. Ground ball up the middle could be two. There's one back to first. A double play and the Dodgers have won it six to two. So Clayton Kershaw leaves town with his 21st win of the season. He indeed has qualified for the pitching triple crown, tying Ian Kennedy and wins with 21 and with a top ERA and strikeout total. As the Dodgers take two out of three, they've won nine of their last ten series as they've closed with a 